This is the Properties of Rational Exponents tutorial. Let's begin by discussing the rational exponent properties. We'll start here on the top left at the multiplication property. So this property states that if you have two exponents with like bases, so like in this case, x raised to the y and x raised to the z, both the bases of those exponents are common, they're both x. That would end up equaling x to the y plus z. So to prove it, let's just plug in some random numbers for x, y, and z. Let's say that x is equal to 2, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 1. So if I had x to the y power, so 2 squared, times 2 to the z power, which is 1, it should be equal to x, which we know is 2, to the y plus z, so 2 plus 1. So let's work it out. 2 squared is 4 times 2 to the first power, which is just 2, is equal to 2 raised to 2 plus 1, so 2 raised to the third power. Well, 4 times 2 on the left-hand side here is 8, and 2 cubed, 2 times 2 times 2, is also 8. So the multiplication property checks out. That's the multiplication property of rational exponents. Let's look down below that at the division property of rational exponents. Let's go ahead and use the same values for x, y, and z as we did in the previous problem. So x, which is 2, raised to the y, which is also 2, over x, which is 2, raised to the z, which is 1, is equal to x to the y minus z, so 2 to the 2 minus 1. We'll continue to the right here and do our work. 2 squared is 4, and on the denominator, 2 to the first power is just 2. On the right-hand side of the equation, 2 raised to 2 minus 1, well, 2 minus 1 is 1, so we have 2 raised to the 1 power, or just 2 by itself. And you know that 4 over 2 is equal to 2, so in the end, we have 2 is equal to 2. That's how the division property of rational exponents works. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next property. What happens when we raise two variables like this, two numbers, x and y, to the same power? Well, what ends up happening is you're going to get x to the z in this case times x to or y to the z as well. So, for example, if x and y were 2 and 3, so we have 2 times 3 here in the parentheses, and z were equal to 2, that would be the same as writing 2 squared times 3 squared. And I'll show you how that works. You know that 2 times 3 is 6. So we have 6 squared is equal to 2 squared, which is 4, times 3 squared, which is 9. Well, on the left-hand side of the equation, 6 squared is equal to 36, and on the right, 4 times 9 is also equal to 36. So that's an example for rational exponents. Let's go ahead and look below. x to the y power, also raised to the z, is really equal to x raised to the y times z. So, if x were 2, and y were also 2, and z were 3, now remember, we're just putting in arbitrary numbers here to test this, but you have to make sure that whatever you put in as x, y, and z on one side of the equation, you put in as x, y, and z on the other side. So on this side of the equation, the right side, it should be x, which was 2, raised to the y times z, so 2 times 3. So on the left-hand side, inside the parentheses, we have 4, 2 squared. So 4 cubed is equal to 2 raised to the 2 times 3, or 6th power. Well, 4 cubed is equal to 64, and 2 to the 6 is also equal to 64. So this problem checks out as well. Now let's look in the top right-hand corner. If you have a fraction such as x over y, and that fraction is raised to an exponent like z, that would really be equal to x to the z power over y to the z power. So if your original fraction was 1 third, so x and y were 1 and 3, and that were, let's say, squared, so z in this case is equal to 2, that'd be the same as saying 1 squared over 3 squared. Now to test it, 1 third squared is really one-third times itself, one-third. And since we multiply across when multiplying fractions, one times one is one, and three times three is nine. So one-third squared is equal to one over nine, 
And on the right side of the equation, 1 squared, which is here, is just 1 over 3 squared, which is 9. So this problem checks out as well. Lastly, let's look down here in the bottom right. Any number that's raised to a negative power is equal to 1 over that number to the positive power. So if, in this case, we could just plug anything in for x and y. So I'm going to plug in uh, 2 and 3 for x and y, respectively. So 2 raised to the negative 3 power is the same as 1 over 2 cubed. 2 to the negative 3 power ends up just being rewritten as 1 over 2 to the positive 3. And that'll be equal to 1 over 2 to the positive 3. So that's how you deal with rational exponents when they're being raised to negative powers. And you can do the opposite if you had to, but that's rarely the case. Let's go ahead and move on now and talk about rationalizing the denominator. So I'm going to teach you how to rationalize the denominator. We're going to start here on the left hand side with radical 5 over radical 7. In math you can't leave a radical or a root of something on the denominator of a fraction. So if you had a problem like root 5 over root 7, we'd want to get rid of that root 7 on the bottom. And the way to do that is to multiply both the top and bottom, so the numerator and denominator of this fraction, by the root that you had on the bottom, so in this case root 7. When multiplying fractions, you multiply directly across. So on the top, we have root 5 times root 7, which is root 35. And on the bottom, we have root 7 times root 7, which is the square root of 49. Now the square root of 35, you unfortunately can't do anything with. It's going to stay like that. However, you know that the square root of 49 is the square root of a perfect square, 7. So the root of 49 is actually 7. So in this case, we've rationalized the denominator, and in doing so, we've gotten rid of the square root on the bottom. Let's do the same over here for this problem on the right. Now remember that to get rid of that root on the bottom, we want to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same exact root. So the root of 3yz. So, on top, the root of z to the fifth times the root of 3yz is going to simplify out to 3 times y times z to the sixth. Remember, when multiplying exponents like this, you're actually adding the exponents. In this case, they're all still underneath the root. That would be written over what we have on the bottom, root 3yz times root 3yz. So 3 times 3 in this case is 9, y times y is y squared, and z times z is z squared. Now remember your rules with roots. Anytime you have 2 of anything, since 2 is the index of these square roots, anything you have, anytime you have 2 of anything underneath that root, you can pull one of them out. So on top, the 3 and the y, there's only one 3 and there's only one y, so they stay underneath the root. However, you have z to the 6, so you have 6 z's, which means you have 3 pairs of z's, 3 sets of 2 z's. So you could pull 3 of those z's out, and when you did, you'd have z times z times z, which is z cubed. So on top, that z to the 6 comes out as z cubed, and on the bottom, you know that the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of y squared is just y, and the square root of z squared is just z, because for every two y's or two z's, you could pull one y or one z out from underneath that radical. So here, this one was a bit longer because we had more work to do after we had gotten rid of the radical. But you can see that we were able to rationalize the denominator of this fraction and doing so, get rid of a square root down there. So now let's talk about multiplying radical expressions. Here's a generic example of multiplying radical expressions. If you have the z root of x times the z root of y, that would be equal to the z root of x times y. So long as both z to the x, or z root x, and z root y are both real numbers. So, 
Let's go over an example. If I had the z root of x, so let's just say we have the square root of x, and x, in this case, is going to be equal to 4. So I'll write that over here. And y is going to be equal to 25. And z will just make equal to 2. So we're going to create a practice problem with it. So let's say that I gave you the square root of x, 4, times the square root of y, which is 25. So the square root of 25. In theory, that should be equal to the square root of x times y, 4 times 25. Now you'll notice that I didn't write in our z here into the index of the radical. And that's only because z is equal to 2. And when the radical, the index of that radical is 2, we don't actually write it. It's just the square root. So we can work this out. The square root of 4, you know, is 2 times the square root of 25, which you know to be 5, is equal to the square root of 4 times 25, or the square root of 100. Well, you know that 2 times 5 is 10, and the square root of 100 is also 10. So that's a way to prove that multiplying radical expressions does work so long as you follow this format. Now you could also work a problem backwards. Let's say you had the cube root of x to the fifth, y to the seventh. You could rewrite that if you wanted as the cube root of x to the fifth times the cubed root of y to the seventh. So that's just working backwards using the generic model that we have above. Now lastly, I think that we should talk about dividing radical expressions. So again, let's take a look at this generic expression we have for dividing radical expressions. If you had the z root of x divided by the z root of y, that would equal the z root of x over y, so long as both the z root of x and the z root of y were real numbers. Let me give you an example of that so that we can make that mean something. For this example, let's just make x equal to 27 and y equal to 64 and z will equal 3. So I'll plug that in for x, y, and z of our generic expression. So we have the cubed root of x, which is 27, divided by the cubed root of y, which is 64. And in theory, that should be equal to the cubed root of x over y, so 27 over 64. Well, you know that the cube root of 27 is 3, and the cube root of 64 is 4. So that should be equal to the cubed root of 27 over 64. If you check that with your calculator, you'll find that 3 fourths is 0 0.75, and the cube root of 27 over 64 is also 0 0.75. So that checks out. Let's try one more example. What if you were given the cube root of negative 135 over 5? Well, we could break that down going backwards using the generic expression we understand for dividing radical expressions. The cube root of negative 135 over 5 we could simplify. We could say that's really the cubed root of negative 27 because I just simplified what was underneath the radical. So negative 135 over 5 reduces to negative 27. And the cube root of negative 27 you know is going to be negative because we have an odd index and a negative radicand. And the cube root of 27 is 3. So our answer here would be negative 3.